It's a pleasure to be speaking to the Redford Forum on Tolerance and Religious Liberty. While I'm sorry I can't be there in person, I appreciate the opportunity to share with you today about the work of the United States to promote religious freedom, protect religious minorities, and advance religious tolerance internationally. Promoting freedom of religion or belief and protecting religious minorities is a foundational tenet of the United States. At home, it was established in our Constitution and was an emphasis from the first days of our Republic. President George Washington famously wrote to the Turo Synagogue in 1790, quote, For happily the government of the United States gives to bigotry no sanction, to persecution no assistance, end quote. And while at times we fall short of these ideals, our Department of Justice and law enforcement officials are constantly working to ensure that all Americans are free to practice any faith or no faith at all, and to do so free from fear of violence or discrimination. Because of the important role that religious freedom has played in the founding of our own country, promoting religious freedom for all and defending the rights of religious minorities has become a unique part of American diplomacy. In fact, last year marked the 20th anniversary of the International Religious Freedom Act, a groundbreaking piece of legislation that our Congress passed to make the promotion of religious freedom worldwide a U.S. foreign policy priority. Our work to promote religious freedom is built on our fidelity to international standards, such as Article 18 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. In another anniversary, 2018 marked the 70th anniversary of the Universal Declaration, which was truly a landmark document recognizing the right of individuals to have any faith or none, to change faith, to share beliefs through teaching and other practices, and to educate one's children. Unfortunately, we're far from the expansive ideals it recognized. The Pew Forum reports that 83% of the global community live in religiously restrictive environments, which is an all-time high. We see persecution continuing in too many places, ongoing repression and atrocities against Rohingya Muslims in Burma, the brutal Chinese crackdown on Uyghurs and other Muslims, Tibetan Buddhists and Christians, attacks by terrorists on Christians and other minorities in Iraq and Pakistan, authoritarian repression of Baha'is in Iran and now by the Houthis in Yemen, and persecution of all faiths in North Korea. In the face of limitations and persecution around the world, we can and must do more to protect every individual's inalienable right to religious freedom. We also need to promote interfaith tolerance and understanding and to defend the rights of religious minorities. In this effort, we're most effective when like-minded governments and communities work together to promote religious freedom. And that is why Secretary of State Pompeo brought together representatives of governments, religious communities, civil society groups, and international organizations from around the world to discuss these issues at the first ever Ministerial to Advance Religious Freedom last year. Held in July, we hosted 84 governments here at the State Department, as well as the European Union, the Organization of American States, the OSCE, and the United Nations. Recognizing the importance of including members of civil society and religious communities, over 400 NGOs and religious figures attended. Everyone came with the joint goal of finding ways governments and civil society can work together to protect religious freedom around the world. We are very pleased that Lord Ahmed represented Her Majesty's government, and we enjoy a strong partnership with Great Britain in protecting religious freedom internationally. It's a great reflection of our shared values. At the conclusion of the ministerial, the Secretary released the Potomac Declaration and Plan of Action. The Potomac Declaration reflects the importance of promoting religious freedom as a universal human right to help ensure greater peace and stability within and among nations. The Potomac Plan of Action provides a roadmap for meeting that goal, outlining a comprehensive framework of activities to promote religious freedom and to respond to persecution on account of religion, belief, or non-belief. The Secretary also issued country statements on Burma, China, and Iran, and three thematic statements. We invited other countries to join, and many participants did so. For instance, the thematic statement on blasphemy was co-signed by a wide variety of countries, including Armenia, Australia, Brazil, Canada, Denmark, Estonia, and Georgia, Hungary, Israel, Kosovo, Oman, Poland, Sri Lanka, and the United Kingdom. However, despite these efforts, our work is not done and persecution persists. Consequently, Secretary Pompeo announced we will convene the second ministerial in Washington on July 16 and 18 this year. Our commitment to working with friends and allies comes from the belief that defending freedom of religion or belief 
is the collective responsibility of the global community, of governments and civil society and advocacy groups. Religious freedom is essential for achieving peace and stability within nations and among nations. We like to say that religious freedom is like a canary in the coal mine. Where religious freedom is protected, other freedoms like freedom of expression, association, assembly, the rights of women and girls, those rights also flourish. Protections for the free exercise of religion directly contribute to political freedom, economic development, and the rule of law. Where religious freedom is absent, conversely, we find conflict, instability, and violence. There is no social trust and dignity, so there is no foundation upon which to build stability and reliable growth. Consequently, we are encouraging countries to convene regional follow-up meetings to the ministerial. I was just in the United Arab Emirates which held the first such meeting, focusing on how to teach interfaith tolerance to combat violent extremism. With intolerance increasing in every society, it is critical we find ways to inculcate in youth an appreciation for religious diversity, for pluralism, for minority rights. The unprecedented meeting helped jumpstart a new conversation about what we can do to promote these values. It really was a remarkable event with experts coming from North America, Europe, South Asia, and the Middle East. And additional meetings on different topics will be held in Taiwan, Mongolia, at the UN, and potentially other countries. In closing, the challenges facing religious minorities are great. However, they will not recede if we are silent or inactive. Promoting interfaith understanding and tolerance is an important first step in reaching full respect for freedom of religion or belief. Therefore, let's work to find new ways to advance religious freedom for all. The need is clear, the time is now, so thank you for letting me speak to you today.